Greetings, folks, uh, and welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to do a, a second show on water supply today. Uh, a couple of shows back, if you recall, we had uh, Doug Murphy, who is the uh, executive director of the Duck River Agency, on to talk about their plans for uh, water supply and drought control and a few other things over the over the long-term future. And uh, the uh, the plan then is to uh, one of the plans, this is going probably going to be the main one, is to raise Normandy Dam by about five feet, and uh, that. Uh, is going to have some uh, impact in the surrounding area, and one of the areas of, of significant impact is going to be the Short Springs Natural Area. So we want to kind of focus on that uh, today, and uh, we have uh, Jeff Stewart, who is the current president of the Friends of Short Springs. And uh, so Jeff, uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and I guess uh, with that, folks, uh, we might as well take a short commercial break and then uh, get down to it. The highest standard of trust offers a sense of safety and comfort. It's established over time. You know when you see it. You know when you feel it. There's a standard of trust in healthcare. It's the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval. In 2003, Life Care Center of Tullahoma voluntarily achieved this accreditation and maintains it still today. Life Care, meeting a higher standard because residents matter most. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with Jeff Stewart, who is the president of the Friends of North Springs uh, Natural Area. And uh, we're trying to get our arms around uh, the long-range planning that's going on uh, that uh, might result in uh, impacting short springs. And we want to find out what that's all about. So, uh, Jeff, I'm not sure in all of the, we have a pretty wide viewing area, and I'm not sure how many uh, how many of our viewers are very familiar with Short Springs, so how about telling them what it is and why we think it's important? Okay, well, th well thank you, Tom. Uh, uh, Short Springs is a, a state-designated natural area that was established in 1994. It's about 420 acres, and it's kind of in the northeast cor corner of uh, Tullahoma. And it's considered by the state of Tennessee to, to be one of the very best wildflower displays in the entire state, which is, which is pretty significant. Uh, the reason for that is because you have this this change in terrain from the from the Cumberland from the Highland Rim down to the Nashville Basin, and so there's lots of springs and uh, uh, clear water and and, and this uh, kind of habitat that that the flowers really really thrive in. And so it's a it's a real unique asset, uh, and it's particularly neat because it's kind of in the city limits of Tullahoma, so it's a, quite a popular place for for a, a lot of folks to go to. Um, and if you haven't been there, I encourage you to come and check it out. The spring wildflower displays are, are great. And uh, there's, there's plenty of available information on the web if you just want to search for it. Is it, uh, are the flowers in bloom now? Yeah, they have been blooming for a couple of weeks. It's kind of a slower spring this year. Uh, last year it all happened within about a week and it was really a profusion of, of different, different things going on. But uh, we're kind of probably reaching the end of that uh, this year. But there'll still be, there'll be stuff down there all year long. Well, for visitors, in order to get down to the wildflower areas, you also, you mentioned this change in elevation, and uh, so you have to go, that's kind of rough terrain, do you have, do you have to be able to maneuver that somehow? Well, um, Friends of Short Springs and uh, TTA worked together to do a work project in there, and we just installed a bunch of steps to get, a, get down the roughest section of the trail to get to the wildflower loop, so it, uh, it's actually better than it's ever been for, for access, and uh, it's not, not too bad, that's a pretty okay. nice trail. 
And you're encouraging folks to come out and see it, huh? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, and uh, what area of the uh, of the Short Springs natural area, what area are you, are you concerned about? <laughs> well, I guess we're concerned about a lot of it because just the influence of, of raising the lake, but the area that will be actually flooded is the is one of the prime uh, wildflower areas in the bottom. It's the, uh, we call it the wildflower loop, and it's two or three acres down in the kind of a, this alluvial bottomland there that, uh, that uh, has this collection of, of wildflowers. Um, so that's that's the area that will be definitely heavily impacted. Um, so. And you say that's uh, one of the unique uh, wildflower areas in the state. Yeah, uh, it yeah. really is. Really is. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, <coughs> excuse me. The Duck River Association says it could be five to ten years before any any dirt is moved, and. Uh, so the question naturally comes up, why is it we're concerned about that now? Uh, you want to speak to that some? Uh, yeah. Um, are we too early? No, that's fine. I think when we, uh, when I, I've tried to look at this, this whole process and things and look at the, the workshops that Doug talks about and things, they, they worked up a, a matrix of uh, alternatives and, and 40 alternatives or whatever, but one of those um, designators with whether an environmental impact study would be required and if there was some sort of environmental concern whether it's the mussels on the duck or the or the uh, state natural area uh, that was kind of I guess dismissed until the environmental impact study is done which is really later in the process and so I guess my concern is is we're actually uh, you know us as citizens we're paying Duck River Agency to go through this with our utility uh, uh, tax, if you will, and so we're doing all this legwork and expense up front um, just to get to this environmental study, which, which uh, hopefully will stop certain aspects of this. And I just feel like we're wasting a lot of money by doing this. The uh, um, the process uh, he, he's first going to submit a, a proposal to TVA. We got to have TVA's concurrence to to go mm -hmm. forward with this project, and they're already working on it. And I believe I'm correct that there is an engineering study ongoing right now uh, with respect to the dam, both as to its uh, integrity as it exists and the ability to, to add uh, five mm -hmm. feet to it. Is that, that's already ongoing, right? I think that's concluding probably this, this month uh, as far as looking at the stability of the dam, yeah. Yeah. Who paid for that? The TVA? Uh, we did. The, uh, the uh, utilities, the, the money the, going to the Duck agency River. paid yeah. for it? They spent, I think it's 100000 or whatever on that, on that effort. Ah, okay. So the spending is already underway. Yeah, we need to talk a little bit about the, uh, the pay uh, because it's unique the way that happens and uh, it really spreads it around. Well, uh, do you want to talk some more about the, uh, the area? What, uh, you got a slide or two, is there something? Well, um, to... sure, we, we can do that now, that, that would be fine. I do have a couple of slides, maybe a little hard to see, and I, I apologize for that, but in the upper area, if you're familiar with the area, um, what you'll see is the, the, the lower wildflower loop area, and the pink, pink uh, strip you see is actually what the water level would be if it was, the dam was raised five feet during a flood event. And we actually did a transit survey uh, down there last year from, from known high water marks to, to come up with this, this information. The bridge that crosses Newman Branch there where Machine Falls is, uh, you'll see that it will actually come up to the middle rail on that bridge. And if you're ever down there, you'll, you'll just see how high that is. And then in the bottom right, you see me standing uh, basically with my snorkel mask on because I'm gonna be below the, the uh, lake level. And there's been a lot of discussion about a little inundation is okay and we'll get the water off within an hour, maybe at most a day, but, but if they raise the dam five feet, they'll also allow the water to come up five feet and it's gonna be a considerable length of time uh, for that to come down, particularly if there's a lot more water coming in from, from Bobo Creek and Newman Branch. So I'm not really buying that argument um, and I'm not also buying the argument that's, that this is uh, flooded on a regular basis, it's not. Um, I don't know if it's ever really been flooded based on the nature of the, of the geology. Um, now this picture here again shows the whole loop and, and, and that's kind of the brown is kind of what the water level would, would be during a, during a flood event. 
So. Oh, the the bottom picture of the. It's uh, the same as the upper the picture, but, that, but basically uh, I've just I've just painted in what the what the water level would be based on our survey. Ah, uh, it's pretty significant. Pretty, pretty significant, yeah. It's hard to imagine it coming off, you know, in a, an hour or a day. And I think it's pretty well known if it stays on it for two or three days, it'll probably kill the kill the uh, the flowers uh, yeah. or the, a lot of the plants. Now this okay. picture, this is a a, a a topo map. The green circle is the wildflower loop that we're just showing. Uh, the red circle is a little further down the lake, just maybe a quarter mile at Adams Branch. They're practically at the same elevation. There's just very little, as a matter of fact, it's indiscernible on the USGS. But the next slide, if you bring that picture up, this is what that area looks like. And this is a cockle burr forest. I mean, it's impenetrable. And so the point being, if you let a little sun in, um, there's very little elevation change here, and this could very well be what short springs will become uh, with a with an inundation or two. So, so uh, with, that's uh, our concern. <coughs> with it being co covered by water uh, and a little sun, your wildflower area might wind up looking like this. Yeah, and and what and you have to understand when we're talking about flood events, if if it's even if Bobo Creek does overflow its banks and washes over the the, the loop, that's that's clear flowing water. It's different than the lake backing up into the area and bringing all that stuff with it. Uh, you know, allows a lot of opportunity for invasives to come in and other things. So it's, it's not the same thing. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we mentioned TVA is having an engineering uh, study now that will determine the feasibility of all this. And uh, at that point, uh, I believe, uh, or shortly thereafter, I'm not sure what the timing on the card had, hard to get a handle on it. But anyway, it'll be a point in time where the Duck River Agency will put together a proposal or a memorandum of agreement of some sort to present to TVA uh, to get their permission to do the dam project that raised the dam. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a, a first and significant milestone. Uh, I suppose you could say that that doesn't really commit that the project's going to be done, but no. that's that's still a pretty significant uh, mm -hmm. to venture. And TVA has already uh, been involved in this uh, issue for some time. I don't know if they've had an opinion on it, but uh, if that uh, does that is that significant to you? The the just the, the step of of going to TVA for the okay. Yeah, I think uh, from what I've gathered from going to the workshops and stuff is that um, you know, uh, Mr. Murphy has, has mentioned basically five things. There's three non-structural projects and two structural ones. And we've been all about the three non-structural ones. They're very good things to do. It's a drought management plan. It's optimizing the release uh, schedule. And it's a, it's a water conservation effort. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, these things are really what is required uh, before TVA will even look at this this kind of thing. So it, it's not necessarily that, that these three things together can. Um, we believe they can mitigate the need for for at least raising Normandy, uh, that big const expensive construction project. But the, but from Mr. Murphy's view, these things are required uh, are going to be required to do uh, regardless. So in, in other words, if, and for him to pursue his structural projects these things have to be addressed. All other avenues have to be addressed before we get to the structural projects. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but all of that is taking more time and spending more money and uh, the uh, I don't have any idea how many how many agencies are involved in trying to get a, a final approval to this thing. Well, and that, that's a good point too. <coughs> um, the way I kind of look at this and it's to me, it's kind of the mission for Duck, Duck River Agency. You can either try to get everybody to work together to come to, to an agreement with water conservation and those kinds of needs, which doesn't cost too much, or you can spend somebody else's money to raise a Normandy Dam, uh, which is which is easy. And that's kind of where I'm at. It's it's uh, it looks like we're taking the easy way out here rather than really getting those agencies together like like we should be. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, folks, we need to take a short commercial break, and we'll come back and go some more. Who needs this modern world? 
I can live just fine out here without the road rage and boy bands. Of course, I might miss my charter HD with football on ESPN and Walking Dead on AMC. ESPN and AMC. And, well, Shark Week on Discovery HD. But that's all. AMC, ESPN, Discovery, TBS, and Comedy Central HD. But that's it. Except for HBO HD. Charter now has over 100 HD channels and more brilliant HD shows on demand than ever. We're talking today, folks, with uh, Jeff Stewart, who is the president of the Friends of uh, Short Springs. And uh, we're looking at the, uh, the planning that's going on now to, uh, uh, that could result in raising the uh, uh, Normandy Dam by five feet and consequently raising the water uh, all, all back of that <coughs> and the impact that has on, uh, on Short Springs. And as Jeff has been indicated, it's, uh, they, they think it would be uh, pretty serious that the uh, wildflower area there is, uh, is very unique and uh, that it stands a good chance of being uh, seriously damaged, if not wiped out, I guess, uh, if the wrong things are going. Uh, well, are there, let's, let's talk a little bit about it. I think you have a view that you, one view that it really isn't necessary to raise the dam. Yeah. Talk, uh, talk some to that. Okay, uh, let's talk about the drought for a second. Uh, the drought was in 07, and um, we, we dropped the lake, I think, 42% or something like that, and everybody got really nervous about it. And uh, of course, that's caused a lot of good discussion among these agencies to try to figure out how to, to manage, best manage the water. But what you have to understand is up to that time, there had never been a really a, a drought management plan at all. And so TVA had a, a release schedule that they were required to, to meet. Part of that was due to Shelbyville's wastewater treatment uh, and some things like that, or maybe the bulk of it. Uh, it was also an instantaneous flow requirement. So since at any time, any given time, it had to be at a certain level, they actually had to release a little more than that to prevent any fluctuations from dropping below that. So basically what happened is they dumped a huge amount of water over the dam uh, that could have been conserved. All right, so, so think about this. We had the worst drought in recorded history, and TVA had no drought management That was the uh, 2007 drought. Right. Yeah. And we still had <coughs> almost 60% of the water left. I thought we actually fared pretty well, if you think about it from that perspective. Now since that time, uh, DRA has been working to come up with a drought management plan in which they can stage releases depending on uh, um, you know, the drought conditions. And there's, I think, four stages, and that's really good. They've also got an optimized release schedule which says we're trying to get away from this instantaneous flow requirement. We want to do a weekly average, which is huge. That's a big deal. And Shelbyville no longer has the wastewater requirement. The, really, the only, the only issue is Columbia's water. Uh, and that's all it's talked about these days. It, it, this thing really started with these other concerns, but Columbia is really the, the focal point of the, of the water issue. So we believe through those three non-structural uh, avenues that, that we're in pretty good shape without having to raise the dam. And we can save all the citizens a ton of money in the process. So it's a win-win. Well, and then uh, the other structural uh, part of the plan was moving the intake at uh, at Columbia Down, downstream. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, downstream to, they call it the Williamsport intake. Right. And the, well, there's a confluence downstream where there's a lot more water coming together. Ah. See, Normandy is only collecting about 10% of the watershed. So you've got this lake way upstream in the watershed. It's, it's 215 miles to Columbia. That's a long way. Uh, <laughs> 215 down the river? Yeah, yeah. And, and so really, it's in Columbia's best interest to move that intake downstream and get more water. And, and of course that doesn't bother us, we think that's great. Now that is a structural project and it's expensive and it will require some 
hard work to get you know the the uh, that plan laid out. Uh, so it takes more work on the DRA's part um, rather than just simply raising Normandy. But I but I believe that's really the best solution is to implement these three non-structural aspects, which are being implemented, and and to address the Columbia intake. And that seems to be a good situation for everybody. Does anybody really argue with you about the fact that that uh, that would take care of it without having to uh, raise the dam? Um, what's what's the other side of that argument? The other side of the argument? You know, I don't really know. Um, I know that from, from what I've heard through these workshops that there is a hundred mile section below, between Shelbyville and Columbia where they can't control water, the water. They can't, you know, if agriculture wants to pull water or whatever, uh, they really have no control over that. And so that's, that's an issue as far as Columbia is concerned. Um, I also know that the utilities are, our money is going into the Duck River Agency. That's only 8% of the water uh, usage. So there's a lot of, quote, non-paying users out there. So, uh, um, what do you think about agriculture? Man? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, agriculture, uh, uh, those areas that, that the utilities are not really involved in. That, and, and that's kind of a, that's an uncertainty that, uh, that I think uh, Duck River Agency has, and that's why it's pushed them toward making, making uh, raising Normandy uh, five feet to hold back more water. They don't have any, uh, they don't have any authority to keep, uh, they can't really control who's tapping into the water. Is that, is that a fair they statement? They can't unless they get with everybody involved and work out some agreements. And yeah. like I said before, that's hard to do. So which is, which is easier? Uh, work out all those agreements or just do a structural project and try to add more water. Okay. Uh, well, as we say, uh, the uh, you've got uh, let's let's touch briefly on all the folks that are involved in coming to a decision on this. You you have the uh, the Tennessee what do you call them TDEC? Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation. Okay, is that is that our environmental agency comparable to the federal EPA? Uh, yeah, uh, TDEC is is pretty large though. It's it's second behind TDOT. You know how big TDOT is, and so yeah. TDEC covers everything from, you know, well drilling and fracking to water management, uh, water resources to natural areas to state parks. So it's a very broad, very broad organization, and uh, I think it's uh, sometimes hard for them to get their communication right on on uh, what's going on. And they're not they're not necessarily uh, heavily uh, uh, leaning toward environmental. Uh, questions are they? No. What, what's their attitude about this whole thing? Well, the uh, the administrator for the state natural areas, the Tennessee state natural areas, Brian Bowen. He uh, he's he's quite concerned. He's actually written a letter uh, to Duck River Agency, um, voicing that concern. He did that in 2010. Um, and he's part of the TDEC. Yeah, he's yeah he's the uh, state administrator for the natural areas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think. In a lot of the workshops, it was the TDEC people involved were more in the water resources side of things. So their view is probably different than, than, than Brian's. Um, uh, other folks were involved in that. The Nature Conservancy set in on the workshops. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service set in on the workshops. So, yeah, there is a, there's a, there is a whole suite of agencies because the Duck River really affects a lot, of, a lot of different folks. Do they, all those folks have to nod their head one way or the other? Well, that's interesting. As far as I can tell, uh, that would be the goal, that everybody comes together and says, okay, we have this requirement for, say, the muscles or whatever, and, and, and everybody has, has their, their needs met, and they, you can come up with this plan. And this is all new. I mean, a lot of these groups have never had to do this before. So, uh, and, you know, Doug mentions that, and I, and I understand, you know, what, he, what he's, he's trying to do there. It's a difficult thing. Um, but if... But he also uses the argument, if they don't do this, if they don't come together, then I really do need this structural project because I can't get these guys to work together. Now, I've actually talked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and I've talked to the Nature Conservancy, and, and I don't get that same impression that... That, uh, that, uh, that they won't work together? Right. I, th I, think it's, I think it's more this environmental impact side of things. It's, again, since it's kind of the last, the last gate, 
uh, that's where a lot of that input comes in. And to me, it's kind of unfortunate that we will proceed that far before we can before we can we can address those things. Maybe we ought to move that closer to the front end. Yeah, yeah I just don't think the process works that way. But that'd be <laughs> great. I'd love to do that. Okay. Well, folks, uh, we're just about to uh, to run out of time. Uh, I did want to touch base. Uh, let, let me just see if you, if there's a one-shot answer. Are there some alternatives? If you assume that the dam, that the dam goes up, are there some alternatives that are feasible to protect Short Springs? Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe something structural. It's hard to hard to imagine that without being very very ex expensive. You know. It, TVA can try to manage the releases to minimize the impact, but they're going to be stuck with with the flooding downstream. You know that issue. I think it's going to be a very difficult uh, uh, task to manage. I, and I'm not saying it's, it, there aren't some maybe some good ideas. I just I just don't know what they are just yet. Um, well, that would that would seem to me to be the uh, the nicest possibility. You know, if you could get. To, solve your problem even if they go ahead with the dam. Mm -hmm. But, okay, well, folks, uh, we've run out of time. We have to uh, take a short break and wrap up. Mark. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay them a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Get your news first, fast, and free with your News Leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. We're back, folks. We've been talking today with uh, Jeff Stewart, who is the president of the Short Springs uh, Natural, uh, the Friends of Short Springs Natural Area. And uh, the concern is over uh, some planning going on with respect to the, to the dam in Normandy Lake that might have a serious impact on Short Springs. So, Jeff, you got a, you got a direct word you want to put to the folks? Well, uh I guess the, the, the situation does, does make us very nervous because we, with the survey, we've seen the damage that can be, can be done. I'm a little encouraged by the fact that the original TVA plan was to push the lake all the way up to Old Stone Fort, but the state was able to provide input and, and prevent them from impacting the, uh, that uh, historical, you know, archeological site. Uh, Short Spring is now was established after the lake was built, so I'm hoping that uh, that will also carry some weight and not set a precedent uh, of impacting these areas, but I encourage uh, everyone to, uh, you know, try to keep tabs on this. And if you and if you care about these natural areas and and, and some of our our wild heritage here, uh, uh, please drop me an email. I think uh, uh, you've seen my email address at Short Springs Friends of Short Springs, and, uh, and pay, a, pay attention and uh, get involved. In That's right. Process. Keep your we're, eyes and ears open. We're all affected by it. Really, we're all paying for it too. And I thank you for your yeah. for your uh, for the opportunity. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time, uh, Jeff, and thank you, Shoke, folks, for inviting us into your parlor, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>